have you ever had so much pain that it's followed you from the moment you woke up until the moment you fell asleep? About two years ago, pain began following me from the moment I woke up until the moment I fell asleep. Tonight, I'll be talking about the different ways and methods I use in order to not only overcome the, ment the physical limitations I face, but also the mental hurdles I had to overcome as well. About two years ago, my, my journey with pain began. And it was from that moment, it was from that moment that I had to overcome many different obstacles. Uh, I had to, I began to research many different types of exercises I could do in order to get me to the results I wanted. I tried everything from planks to physical therapy and even at-home exercises, but nothing really seemed to work. Shortly after this period, it was when the pandemic really began to take a hold and I began to become lazy about my progress. It was also during this period where my anxiety surrounding my injuries really started to strengthen. It convinced me that if I were to continue to do my exercises and stretches, that it would only make things worse. And I believed it. For months, all I did was sit in my chair, believing that the thing that was meant to help me would only make things worse. It wasn't until months later, quite recently actually, where I realized movement helps. I began again to become excited about my rehab progress. And once again, I began to research all the different exercises I could find in order to further my progress. But nothing really seemed to work. I was not getting the results I was looking for. So I am a huge sports fan. And I've always admired professional athletes for the way they are able to bounce back from brutal injuries and continue playing at a higher elite level. So I decided to look up all the athletes I've always admired in the past and use their stories as inspiration. I'd like to highlight two of those athletes that I used. The first one is Al Smith. He is a professional quarterback in the National Football League. About two years ago, he suffered a devastating knee injury requiring surgery. Uh, he had the surgery and he thought he was gonna be fine. Uh, turns out his leg became infected because of the surgery. It was at that moment that Alex was literally on his deathbed uh, trying to figure out what to do next. So his doctor gave him two options. He could either amputate his leg, but his NFL career would be over and he would never be able to play again. Or he could go through multiple more surgeries and maybe play at a level, but definitely not at the way he performed prior to his injury. Alex took the second option. 17 surgeries later, he's now once again a starting quarterback in the National Football League, having just started his first game on Thanksgiving. ESPN has a program called 30 for 30. It's kind of like a documentary show where they like to highlight different athletes with inspirational stories. And one of the episodes actually followed Alex's journey through uh, his full recovery period. Uh, and the reporter that produced that episode actually asked Alex, what got him through all those surgeries? He responded that he looked at the small wins, the small victories. That's what kept him going. And that's also what I took from his journey and implemented it into mine. The next athlete was DeMarcus Cousins. DeMarcus is a professional basketball player who suffered two consecutive season-ending surgeries, injuries. Uh, he tore his ACL and he tore his Achilles tendon. Both, time, both times, DeMarcus uh, heard it all from doubters to critics, from everyone, from analysts to fans to reporters, all counted him out both times he got injured, doubting whether he could play at the level he once did before his injuries. But DeMarcus loved the game of basketball so much that he stuck to his program, he stuck to his rehab progress, and now he's once again a professional basketball player playing at an elite level. 
like Alex, DeMarcus had a documentary filming and following his progress. Uh, in the documentary, he goes on to talk about uh, what his mental approach was like during his rehab. And uh, one quote really stuck out to me. Uh, he said that he would not be defined by his injuries. So much of last year, we were de defined by outside circumstances and events out of our control. But as we're entering into this new year, we have an opportunity to really become the definers. But as inspirational as both of their stories were, I still was not finding the results I was looking for. It was at this moment, I knew something else had to change. I needed a major mental shift because at this point, my anxiety was so great that it not only impacted my situation with my injuries, but it also impacted every other area of my life. For example, in regards to my health and like my other areas of my health, I became so afraid of eating things that I hadn't already been incorporating into my diet that I, was, I lost 30 pounds. I had, I had lost over 30 pounds because of that. So I needed almost a mental revolution. And I truly believe that meant developing mental toughness or becoming grittier. I, I realized that I needed not only just to get from one point to another, but I needed to get from point A to point Z and fast. Um, and it's funny because when I was researching for this or when I was preparing for the speech, I was researching all of the motivational videos, all of the motivational quotes. I got so motivated for the speech, um, but I came across one speech that, one quote that really said, and I stuck with me, motivation is bullshit. That is 100% true. Motivation is bullshit because it's only offering a temporary push and I needed something to get me from point A to point Z. But as I conclude, 2020 was filled with anxiety. Everything surrounding from COVID uh, to anything, really, it was filled with anxiety. Um, but as we're entering into this new year, we have the chance to become definers and not let outside uh, factors define us and instead write a new chapter. Thank you.